Hi, this is Charlie Zeese with Stargate Pyramids. Today I'm uh, doing the first of a, a revived series of research uh, topical videos on uh, Russian pyramids ever since we stopped uh, doing the live streams uh, and I've started uh, researching the book. I've decided to go ahead and, and, and revert back to doing topical uh, subject matter uh, dealing with the science behind uh, Russian pyramids. So this is going to be the first one of these. Uh, as I'm doing research for the book, and I've start, I have started to write the book, uh, and it's coming along nicely, but it's going to take a while, uh, I came across some information that helped me to understand some of the information that I found about Russian pyramids that was somewhat anomalous to me at first blush. And and that uh, anomalous information was the fact that uh, the Russian research indicates that pyramids that are uh, constructed at a point, it, it takes them a while to, to kind of maximize their, their energy fields. But once that's done, if the pyramid is actually deconstructed and moved away, that the impact of the pyramid on the energy field stays in place. And that was just an amazing, uh, you know, discovery for me. Couldn't quite put it all together in my head until I found this information uh, that I'm going to talk about today, which is called the uh, phantom DNA uh, effect. And you'd say, well, what does DNA have to do with this? We're going to discuss that in a minute. But what I, the easiest way for you to understand this, I'm going to open up the screen. Greg Braden has talked about this information uh, for a number of years, and he did an excellent uh, three-minute explanation of this effect, so I figured it might, we might as well use his uh, explanation since he's, uh, you know, an expert in that field. So uh, if you'll bear with me, I'm going to open up my screen, and we can watch that video now. was conducted by uh, a Russian physicist, Vladimir Popanin, uh, in the early 1990s. He came to the United States to, to finish this series of experiments. And what Popanin did was he wanted to investigate the relationship between human DNA and the stuff our world is made out of, little packets of energy that we call photons, little particles of light, if you want to think of them that way. So the experiment consisted of taking a tube, a glass tube, uh, drawing all the air out of this tube, creating what today we call a vacuum, implying that there's nothing left in this tube. However, we know that there's still something left, these, these little particles of light. So Pope then measured the particles to see how they were distributed. Did they fly all over the place inside the tube, or were they all accumulated at the bottom, or what happened with them? And the results of this part of the experiment were not surprising, because the, the little particles of light, the photons, were completely random, and this is what they expected. The next part of the experiment is where this gets really, really interesting. Because they placed some human DNA into this tube. And the human DNA, when they remeasured the photons, the human DNA had caused the photons to form an alignment. The DNA was having a direct effect on the stuff our world is made of. Now this is precisely what ancient spiritual traditions have always said. That something within us has an effect in the world around us. And Popanin's experiment for the first time in recent times is actually verifying this under laboratory conditions. And the next piece of the experiment is even more interesting because what they found was that when the DNA was removed from the tube, we would expect that they would all go back randomly distributed just the way they were before. And this is not what happened. What happened was even though the DNA was no longer in the tube, the photons remained aligned as if the DNA were still there. And the question is why? What is it that causes this effect? There's nothing in Western physics that accounts for why those photons should remain in the position that they were in when the DNA that caused them to be, become aligned is now removed from the tube. This experiment is called the phantom DNA experiment because, uh, because the effects last whether the DNA is there or not. And what it tells us is number one is that DNA is communicating, human DNA is communicating with the stuff our world is made of, the packets of energy that that underlie all of matter, it's communicating through a field that has previously been unrecognized. Uh, the scientists call it a new field. My sense is it's probably been there all along. So I hope you found that as fascinating as I did. I, as soon as I saw this video 
Uh, I've I've had a chance to read the uh, the underlying research as well, but this is I see amazing parallels here with the geometry of the Stargate Pyramid. We've gone over in in previous videos the fact that the geometry of the Stargate Pyramid is that of the phi spiral, and what Braden's uh, you know um, description of this research is indicating. The DNA in our in our cells is also uh, oriented it just as uh, in the in the shape of the phi spiral, and that's been well documented by a number of other researchers. So, what I have started to come up with is some some tentative thesis uh, theses as to what's going on here. Number one, this uh, experiment helps me to to at least grasp the idea that a pyramid, once it is uh, taken away from its environment, that uh, the energy field continues to be ordered and structured uh, as it was uh, while the pyramid was, was in that field. Because that's exactly what happened in this experiment with DNA. And so when you see the similarities there and you know that the geometry is the same, of that of the phi spiral, both in the pyramid and the DNA, you really have to start to question and wonder whether or not uh, the reason why you get the health benefits that you get the uh, uh, the interdimensionality, uh, the greater psychic ability, and and so forth inside the pyramid, doesn't have something to do with the geometry because it seems to to correlate with these ex, uh, these experiments. So I'm going to be doing some more research into this, and uh, I'll obviously be talking about this more as time goes on, and, and certainly this is going to be a, a portion of the uh, information that I'm going to be providing uh, in the book when it comes out. But I thought this was information that it should be of interest to all of you who have a serious interest in why and how uh, Russian pyramids and, and our Stargate pyramids uh, have the, the, the benefits that they do. So I thank you for watching. If you have any questions, as always, feel free to contact me at stargatepyramids at yahoo.com. And if you're interested in purchasing Stargate Pyramids, visit stargatepyramids.com. And we thank you for watching, and you have a great day.